Got another video on the 2016 Chrysler 300, 3.6 liter. Gonna be draining the cooling system, replacing the thermostat housing. Gonna upgrade that to an aluminum style one from the plastic. And then also the plastic coolant pipe. Gonna upgrade that to an aluminum style one as well. And then I'll go ahead and uh, show you how to refill the cooling system. So first thing you wanna do is go ahead and pop your hood. Okay, so with your hood popped here, and I just wanna let you guys know, I'll be doing uh, three separate videos at the same time. So hopefully I don't leave anything out. Uh, but the first video is going to be replacing all six spark plugs. Um, second video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace the oil filter housing uh, and cooler. And then on the third, I'm going to be replacing the thermostat, the coolant pipe, and then also draining the cooling system as well. So go ahead and uh, locate your coolant reservoir here. Let's go ahead and pull that uh, cap off. Make sure your engine is cool. Before you do this, you just kind of unscrew it, press down, and then go ahead and pull that off. So then come down on the uh, passenger side here, and what's nice is Chrysler put a, a little hose here for your coolant to drain. So go ahead and get you a drip pan here. We'll go ahead and slide that underneath that rubber hose there. That way the coolant will drain into that. So then come over here to the passenger side here. You can see your alternator there. And then down below there's going to be your uh, drain plug for your radiator. So let's go ahead and loosen that up. So what you want to do here is you can see our drain plug and then the hose going out of it down into our pan past the skid plate there. So we need to loosen this plug. So just go ahead and try turning it. And it's kind of hard to turn. So if you need to get a pair of pliers here, see if that'll help you spin it out of there. your arm down in here so just get it like that and you can hear it drain there so we'll go ahead and let that drain and then as you can see it's not draining too fast here but that's all right uh, this way it doesn't make a mess so I'll go ahead and let this drain so next we're gonna need to uh, remove this engine cover here. So go ahead and just lift up on it and it should just pop right off, just like that. And then if you look here, you got these little tabs here, which snap into these round parts here. Okay, so our uh, thermostat housing is gonna be right here and then that coolant pipe right here. You guys could probably do this uh, without having to remove the intake here, but I'm just gonna do it just to get us some better uh, camera angles here. So take an eight millimeter, let's go ahead and loosen up that hose clamp there. Come over here to the throttle body, loosen up that one, and you can see whoever's been here before didn't even put that on all the way. Go ahead and loosen that. Next, go ahead and unplug this sensor here. What you do is you got a little tab right here. So you push down on that and then pull out. That's what that looks like. So now we should be able to pop this off and there should be a rubber plug holding that down right there, but you can see this one's missing. So again, somebody didn't put this back on correctly. But you can just pull it off your air filter housing there. And then you should be able to just pop that off like that. Okay, so with our air intake and all that off the throttle body, now you can see we got a lot more room to access our thermostat housing. And then of course this uh, coolant tube here as well. And like I said earlier, I'm doing three different videos. So I got this all replaced, the uh, oil filter housing and then the oil cooler, and then also the spark plugs. So like I said, if you're interested in that, check that video out. But if you take a look here, let me zoom in. So the reason I'm replacing this is uh you can see some of the pink around here so this was leaking at one point so i'm going to go ahead and upgrade this uh from the plastic to an aluminum one and then on the thermostat housing here i got an aluminum thermostat housing as well with a new thermostat i'm going to be putting on here because if you take a look here you can see that little bit of white there uh this is a common issue on these thermostat housings here it uh for some reason starts to leak right where that uh, plastic is kind of joined together right there so we're gonna go ahead and replace that. 
So now let's see if we can get this upper radiator hose off of the thermostat housing. I went ahead and put another drip pan down there because there's most likely going to be more coolant coming out of this. So let's go ahead and uh, loosen up this clamp here. And then just try and twist that off of there. Let me get a different pair of pliers. Pull that off. tilt that hose out of the way get that off so then go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter and you got one bolt there and then there's one directly underneath here so go ahead and pull off those There's that one. So once you get that one loose, you just grab these rags. I'm just gonna shove some rags under here so it doesn't make too big of a mess, just to kind of soak that up so it doesn't get all over the uh, serpentine belt there. Pull this out the rest of the way. should be able to just pop this off and luckily that didn't make too big of a mess you can pull this gasket off here so next we'll go ahead and pull this hose off of here so again just get your clamp loosened up here and try and pull that off let me grab a screwdriver. Let's see if we can kind of help pry that off of there. So get that off of there like that. Just kind of get this out of the way there like that. So now let's go ahead and pull off all these 10 millimeter bolts. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So go ahead and pull all those off. So once you get all those removed, and then just as you guys are removing those as well, keep track of where they went. Uh, but I'll show you at the end here where they go because they're uh, different sizes. So you should be able to just pull this off of here. Go ahead and remove your gasket. All 
All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean all this up. I need to let my camera charge. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna clean this up. But I'm just gonna take some brake clean, and some rags, and maybe just lightly with a razor blade, clean some of this uh, junk off of here, and then I'll come back. Okay guys, so as you can see, got this all cleaned up here. Like I said, I just used some brake clean with a rag, and then I lightly scraped it with a razor. Uh, be careful doing that because you don't want to dig into this aluminum. I just used the razor pretty much to get some of that corrosion off of there. So now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our new parts here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our new parts here. Our old thermostat housing. And uh, these thermostats are included with the uh, housing. Uh, you can't really just buy the thermostat by itself. You need to replace the whole housing with it. And if you take a look here, you can see that white dot there. So this is a common issue. Like I said, this is where they start to leak. And uh, this one was just about ready to start leaking. So it's a good thing we're replacing it. And uh, I'll show you what Dorman's solution is to that. So it's the uh, 902-3035HP. Got this on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. If you take a look, you can see this whole housing is aluminum now, which eliminates... Uh, that problem from happening and then of course it's the same you see we got a bleeder screw that we can pull out and it includes a new thermostat as well and then also the o-ring so we'll go ahead and install that and then for this coolant pipe here um, like I said this was leaking as well and if you take a look here looks like there's like spiders or ants or something in here not sure why those are in there but uh this was starting to kind of leak up here, and uh, this is Dorman's solution to that, 902-3102HP, which I also got on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description for it. But if you take a look here, it's exactly the same, but again, it's all aluminum, and then you can see it includes an all-new gasket as well. So we'll go ahead and throw that on. But I want to show you real quick here. So if you take a look at this old one, there's these little uh, like plastic inserts only on some of these holes here, which are supposed to go around these longer bolts. So we need to remove all of these. There's a total of seven of them, and that's where all these long bolts went. So what you want to do is you can just kind of get, stick this one of the old bolts in there and then just kind of pry it out of there. You can see that's what that looks like. So let me go ahead and pull the rest of these out of here. And that one's really stuck in there. So let me try that one last. Get the rest of these out of here. So this one here is pretty rusted. I guess it's kind of going there. So as you see, so like I said, you got a total of uh, seven of those. So go ahead and pull those out. And then what we'll do is we'll stick these on all the long bolts when we put them into the uh, new one there. All right, so then grab your new coolant pipe here. And then just make sure that this gasket's all in place. You can kind of lightly press around here. And then uh, go ahead and stick this up on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go kind of opposite so I'll start out where I uh, took the last one off. So just kind of get this in place here. So grab your first bolt here, which is going to be a short one. And that's going to go up in here. Just kind of get them started by hand. Some of the threads in there. 
Next one is going to be another short one. It's going to go right here. And then the next one's going to be a long one. And you can see I put that little plastic or rubber insert on. That's going to go right here. Then you got another short one. Another long one with the uh, little bushing. Below that, another long one with the bushing. Next to that one, another long one with the bushing. And then another long one with the bushing. Then you got a short one down here. And then our last two are gonna be uh, long ones with the bushings as well. So like I said, kind of get all those started by hand. And then we'll go ahead and get them snug. And then we'll do a final torque as well. So now we'll go ahead and get them snug up. Um, I'm just gonna kinda go uh, opposite just to make sure that goes on there evenly. And then we'll go ahead and torque it. So then go ahead and grab your torque wrench and we're going to torque all those to 96 inch pounds. Again, I'm going to go kind of in a crisscross pattern here just to make sure they all get even. Okay, once you get them all torqued, I'm just gonna go around them one more time just to double check, make sure they're all good. So now we'll go ahead and get our hose back on here. So get your clamp squeezed. Try and get that in the same spot. Let's get that on there. Yeah, let me just move this clamp a little bit here. Just like that. Grab your new thermostat and housing. And then again, make sure this gasket's in there good. Go ahead and stick that in there. And get those started by hand. Same with your bottom one here. And then go ahead and get those snug.
grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque those to 108 inch pounds. And then just double check again. Next, go ahead and get your upper radiator hose back into place here. Get this clamp back on here. Get that on there, just like that. And then again, I'm gonna try to get this uh, clamp back into place. Let me grab my other pliers. And I'm trying to get it lined up the way it was before. That way it doesn't leak. So I think about right there. It's about where it was. So it should be good like that. So next we'll go ahead and uh, close up that radiator drain valve down there. So go ahead and reach down there. Get that twisted up. And it's still hard to do with just your fingers. Let me grab some pliers. Just like that you can hear it kind of click into place so we should be good right there and then you can just take a rag kind of clean up any of this excess coolant that kind of spilled just for when we uh, go to look for leaks so we'll go ahead and get our uh, intake back on let's go ahead and uh Slide that onto your throttle body here. Kind of get that in place. Come over here to your air filter housing. Get that on. Go ahead and plug in your mass airflow sensor here. And then just make sure that it's on all the way. And then, like I said, there's supposed to be a rubber piece down here, but this one's missing it. So just make sure that's on all the way. Go ahead and tighten up your hose clamp with an 8 millimeter. And, of course, same thing on this one here. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and mix our coolant. So I went ahead and bought uh, two gallons of this off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, but it's just the uh, Mopar concentrate. So we do need to mix this. And uh, this is the Mopar OAT coolant, which is what you want to use in these vehicles. It's kind of a pinkish color, but then over time it turns into an orange. And uh, normally you guys would mix this 50-50 uh, being down here in the lower 48 and you'll be just fine. But like I said earlier, this is my daughter's car, and she's actually moving up to Alaska here soon. And she's moving right outside of Fairbanks on the uh, Army base up there. So I think what I'm going to do, instead of 50-50, I'm going to go 60-40, just to give her a little more freeze protection. Because the 60-40, uh, it'll be uh, good up all the way down to negative 62 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know up there they get down to uh, negative 30, negative 40 easily in the wintertime. So let's go ahead and mix this. Um, and what you want to do is just mix this with distilled water because distilled water doesn't boil. And I actually picked this up at Walmart. I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, but it's easy to uh, measure this out, especially since I'm not doing 50-50. So I think what I'm going to do for the 60-40, I'm going to go right at about two and a half uh, quarts of coolant. And then we'll go ahead and go up to the four with uh, our distilled water here. 
So let me go ahead and pull this off. Go ahead and open up one of these. Like I said, if you guys do the 50-50, that's what normally I do. And that's just fine. Good enough protection for down here in the lower 48. So let me go ahead and, uh, like I said, I'm going to take this up to the uh, two and a half mark there. So right about there. Open up this uh, distilled water. And I'll go up to the four. And that'll give us exactly one gallon of uh, 60 40 mix here. So, right there, like that. Go ahead and just put this back on here. And we can go ahead and start filling. And then I forgot to show you guys here, but if you take a look, this is what we came out. And if I tilt this back, so this is in quartz, you got 20, 15, 10. And if I tilt this back a little bit there, you can see there's our five quart mark. So it looks like we're sitting right at about five, six quarts of coolant that came out. And then before we uh, go ahead and start filling, I forgot we need to pull this up leader screw off of here. So this new one's gonna be a 16 millimeter, but if you still have the old plastic style housing, you can use a Phillips head uh, screwdriver. So just go ahead and loosen that. I guess we should have filled it before we put the intake on, but that's all right. So go ahead and pull that plug out of there. And you can see it does have a little rubber O-ring as well. And what we're gonna do is uh, we'll go ahead and start filling. And then once we see coolant coming out of that, you wanna grab it real quick and uh, tighten it up. Cause then we know we got all the uh, air out of it. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling this. We'll start out with these uh, four quarts first. And you can see I kind of made a mess there. So that right there is uh, four quarts or one gallon. So let me go ahead and uh, mix up another gallon here real quick. And I'll actually just wipe this off as well. Okay, so I went ahead and mixed up another gallon of coolant here, 60-40. So let's go ahead and pour this in here. And it's probably getting close to where uh, coolant's going to come out of that bleeder hose. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And there you go. So you can see it coming out down there. So hurry up and get your uh, plug in here it makes too big of a mess go ahead and screw that in and let's go ahead and tighten that down so get that pretty snug So you get it about there. And I'll probably have to go and wipe some of that off down there. So now we can go ahead and continue filling. Let me go ahead and move my camera here so I can show you. So if you take a look here, you can see this uh, lower line here is gonna be your minimum line. Top one's gonna be your maximum. So let's go ahead and continue filling here. And we can actually probably go over the maximum line a little bit here. Cause once this warms up and that thermostat opens up and it starts flowing, uh, through the whole system there. This is probably going to drop just a little bit. So if we go over that max line for now, it's not going to hurt anything. So just go ahead and uh, add some more here. So I'm going to go ahead and just try that. That's right at about the max line there. So that should be good for now. And I'll go ahead and just wipe this down a little more. And I'm actually going to leave that cap off for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. And then we'll go ahead and uh, turn this on. 
figure out the climate control here. So we'll go ahead and just put it on the floor for now and then make sure you're on high, warmest setting on both of those. And we'll go ahead and let this warm up. Let's see where we're at so far. Uh, wrong, wrong way. So you can see it's already climbing faster. So we're already at 140 degrees on the coolant temp. So we'll go ahead and let this idle and get up to a normal operating temperature. And then uh, we'll check to see too, once we start getting warm air coming out of the vents, knowing that it's flowing through the heater core. And then with the run in here, you can go leave your tap off if you want. But you can see it dropped just a little bit just from starting it. So let's go ahead and uh, like I said, we'll let this get up to temp, get that thermostat to open up. And then uh, we can go ahead and recheck this in a little bit here so then just check your uh, coolant pipe here and then your thermostat and see that looks good I don't see any uh, leaks coming out of that so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this cap for now let that build some pressure all right guys so I ended up having to uh, take it on a little drive here to get that thermostat to open up but as you can see now we're uh, up to normal operating temperature there and uh, we also got hot air coming out of the vents here, so we should be good. So let me go ahead and shut it off here. So then go ahead and uh, check your level again, since our thermostat did open. And uh, you can see it dropped a little bit here, but once this cools off overnight, this will probably slowly drop a little bit, and then I'll need to add some in the morning because coolant expands with heat. And then another way you can tell if your thermostat opened up is if your uh, upper radiator hose is a hot to touch which this one is then you know the thermostat opened up over there and coolant started flowing through it and then don't forget to put your uh, little engine cover on here get all those lined up again these uh, little rubber areas here click onto those just make sure you get those all lined up and just push it down into place just like that all right, so that's going to do it for the video. Again, this was a 2016 Chrysler 300, 3.6 liter. Went ahead and uh, drained the cooling system, replaced the thermostat and housing, along with the uh, coolant pipe as well. And I went ahead and upgraded those both to the aluminum style ones. So hopefully my daughter has no more issues. And then, of course, went ahead and refilled the cooling system with new coolant and uh, bled it. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and check this coolant level in the morning there uh, once it cools off because that level will drop a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and top it off to the uh, max line there. So hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos. I got a bunch on this car alone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.